Miss Black, welcome. Hello, darling. Very Hello. nice to see you. So the, the, just, just wrap up a bit of Coronation Street because yeah. the door is still open. Absolutely. Although yeah. Ken clearly... Well, he's been running around with Stephanie Beecham, which I, you know, think very poorly of. And to be honest, I'm ready for a bun fight. With, with her? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she was very, very good as, as Martha, though, wasn't she? That, Fab. Uh, the temptress Absolutely in the barge. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Coronation Street. <laughs> But I think the temptress and the hairdressers should come back, you know, yeah, around the corner. She's fun, isn't she? With Daniel. It Daniel yes. Daniel, isn't it, your Yes, son? it is, darling. Yes. Yeah. And he's how old now? I think, think he's 11 or 14. It's hard to remember. 11 or 14. <laughs> and he's still a young man. Yeah, he's adorable as <laughs> And well. where is she? Where are you living there? I have no idea. No. No, I, I, I mean, obviously, I ran away with my brother-in-law, which um, is always a bad thing It was thing a poor show. Yes. yes. Yes, yes, I was a bad girl. But you could come back how again. How tempted, yeah, how tempted would you be to go back? Would you like I have to? always, always said, as far as I'm concerned, um, I've been schlepping around in theatre for ten years before I got Corrie, and I'm forever grateful he gave me a career, and uh, and I, I love him to bits. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. And Anthony Cotton and uh, Craig Kelly from Queer as Folk are in it at the moment, so I've got to go back, haven't I? Exactly, so they're your old yeah. mates, aren't mm. they? And Deirdre, well, she's a saint, isn't I know. she? I know to take she him is. back and not say another word. I know. Well, you know your contract's coming to an end when you muck around with Ken and Deirdre. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Yes, don't. Anyway, on to fresher things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're currently packing them in, in am, Leeds darling. at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. Yeah, we just opened. The f yes, on Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's the brilliant um, Alan Akebourne bedroom farce, yeah. which you said your husband and sons came to see at the weekend. Son and daughter Son and, and hubby daughter. came on Saturday. It was our first preview. And the house absolutely rolled in the aisle. It was sold out. It's selling incredibly well. It's deeply funny. I needed this job like a hole in the head. I'm so busy at the moment, but the script's so funny, you've got to do it. Mm. Is it their sides were aching? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is that funny. Yeah, it is. I it's hope there wonderful. are still some tickets, because otherwise you're here under false pretenses. No, no, no. <laughs> I believe that there were 70 or 80 on Monday and Tuesday, so go and get them. Ah. <laughs> well, you're at the uh, the West Yorkshire uh, Playhouse in Leeds. That's, that's right. That's you? right, yeah. Well, and you live on the south coast? I do. I live in Brighton. Right. I've got a boat um, in Chichester, where my sister lives, and you know my sister. Yes, very good dentist. Is she? Mm. Mm. I went to a party of hers one night. It was great. Did you? Dentist party. party. Yeah, she, she, she was a murder. A mystery. Oh, she great. fixes your teeth as well. Yeah, she's like, hello, Carol. <laughs> see you for years. <laughs> Very well, isn't it? Everyone needs a good dentist. <laughs> and um, and so uh, so are you, but you're backwards and forwards because All you're, over you're the gigging place. as well, which is one I of the am. other things that we're going to, That's to, right. to talk about. I've got um, a band called The Loose Screw. Right. And uh, um, uh, they are Graham Taylor and Ben Grove, and they are absolutely phenomenal musicians. Phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, uh, just really brilliant. I met them on a show last year and they said, would you join? I took them sailing in my boat and they said, would you be in a band with us? I went, yeah! So I've got a band and um, uh, Maria Kempinska, who owns Jonglers, is promoting us at the Ballam, oh. in Ballam at the Bedford. And we've got a sequence of Sunday gigs, June and July. First one's 21st of June. Lots of guests. So is this, is this something that, that, that you've always had that you, that you wanted to get back to? It was what I did um, when I couldn't get arrested when I was a wannabe actress. I used to sing for my supper. Um, I had an outfit called Denise Black and the Cray Sisters. We toured for years. <laughs> I used to play at Les Cargo here in London. And um, then I produced a musical about 10 years ago, a bit more. Mm. And I promised myself I'd do a sequence of um, gigs. But I want it to be with comedy. We've got guests, we've got comics, we've got um, singer-songwriters, all sorts. So, because it's a recession, isn't it? So we want a bit of fun. Oh, you've got to brighten it up, yeah. yeah. And, but do you lose the... Um, because I, I can imagine that being a comedian and standing up on a stage and, and holding an audience is terrifying. And so once you've been away and done a bit of telly and a bit of safe things, yeah. is that fear yeah, greater still? Terrible, terrible, terrible. Really? I think that if you don't get on the stage every three years, then you probably will fall off because the kind of stage fright that you have to deal with. But I actually didn't do stand-up. I did alternative cabaret. Um, but the nearest I got to stand up was a couple of years ago. I did a tour of Grumpy Old Women Live with <gasps> Britt Eklund yeah, yeah. and <laughs> Dilly Keane, the genius Dilly Keane, and um, got directed by Hannah Chiswick, who's directing The Loose Screw at, uh, yes. at the Bedford. Hang so. on, Dilly Keane was fascinating Ada, That's wasn't her. she? And she's a comic genius. Really? Absolutely. And how was Britt Eklund? Uh, it was a surprising show. <laughs> <laughs> she's one of those 
brilliant oh, eccentrics, isn't she? She's extraordinary. She's got a little dog called Tequila. Yes. In fact, one of my favourite memories is early in the morning and we were all grumpy as sin. We'd just been got out of bed. It was one night stands playing to 2,000 people a night, average age 55. And uh, uh, we were squashed in a car like this and Brit was steaming and Dilly was steaming. <laughs> and I got fit the giggles. I thought, life's such fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's and what great. about uh, so? What about uh, other other roles on on telly now? Because I know you've got you've got you've a fairly got a heavy one coming. Listen, up, I went. Um, something happened to me uh, a little while ago um, in South Africa, which um, uh, uh, I was filming a thing um, called "To the Ends of the Earth," and I uh, I've always liked taking risks. And I was on a diving course with Benedict Cumberbatch and a gorgeous South African actor called Theo, and we got carjacked, and. Um, it was deeply, deeply scary. Hang on a minute. So you were in a car and some, you were yeah. stopped somewhere. Where well, you were we, we think that we went over um, a trap and we got a flat tyre. Because we're <gasps> actors, we can't change a tyre. So they came and they wanted to rob us, but they thrust us in the car and they took us off the road and we were... We were um, tied up in all sorts of exciting things. For how long? Oh, not, a couple of hours. And I think only because we're actors, so we're full of gab, and we were terribly polite, and also we were terribly scared, and I think we negotiated our way out of there. And, were uh, there weapons, knives, guns? Yeah, well, all sorts. It's South Africa. It's a very real place. Yes. And um, I think the fact that we were actors, because, of course, we were telling them all the time, saying, no, you can't, you know, you can't tie us up and you can't this, because we were so scared. And I think only actors would actually do that. And, uh, and also at the end, I showed him my hand and um, he said, uh, we won't tie you. And then I knew then he didn't tie this hand. Oh. I knew then I was going to live. Yes, I'm very grateful for having good carjackers. So, what, what, so explain oh, the hand. Is, that's from birth. Yeah. So that's just a, that's me. And he, and he... Recognised, I said it will hurt yes. if, you, oh. if you tie me too tight. Oh. And was that true? Yes. It was true. Yes, it was true. And, and then I knew there was humanity there and that, yeah. that um, if we just behaved ourselves, it was just a robbery. There what was nothing else. What did they take in the end? Um, well, they took the car and they took, what they do is they get the pin numbers from the <gasps> cards mm. and then what they traditionally do is they put somebody in the boot and take them to check that the numbers work and then they usually shoot that person but because we refused we, we, we ended up, they just left us. Please. How did you know this, though? How did you know to behave um, like Theo, that? who is my hero now, and I'm deeply in love with both Theo and Ben, and I did say at the end, can we stay in touch forever, had just had an email about how to behave in a carjack. So the first thing he shouted is, don't look at them. So I spent the whole time like that. And I never looked them in the face. And, Please, thank you, yes, boss, no, boss. He's, I had a knife on me because I'm a sailor. He went, nice knife. I went, yes, very nice. Would you like it? <laughs> So, uh, so after that, I thought, I'm not going to muck around anymore. I'm going to enjoy my life. Yes. And I, I'm completely addicted to comedy yeah. now and seeing the light side of life. Wow. And then what a bond you then have as well with Benedict. Who I've just worked with. I didn't know. I was doing a job in um, Ireland. And the only reason I'm mentioning this now is because um, Ben's decided to mention it. We kept it under wraps. He's um, written a story for the Prince of Wales Trust. Good and heavens. so so we all got together and we said, no, that's fine, we'll talk about it now. But darling, you might get the newspapers on now wanting to hear this story. I'm I doubt sorry. it. It's a long time ago. Well, <laughs> when was you'd it? You'd be surprised. 2004. Right. Didn't mm. mention it. Didn't mention it to my folks. Not you anybody. You haven't told you. Didn't tell your family? I told my husband. I was working with Sam Neill. I'd just done a duet with him. It was his birthday. And uh, it was after that that we went. And um, I didn't ring my husband. And he's, and uh, of course, I mean, I was terribly scared. I lost half a stone in a night through shaking, just fear. And uh, he's, he could, it, the, the cast were really lovely. And he said, I think you should tell your husband. And I, so it took me about 24 hours to collect myself so I could yeah. tell him, because I thought it would worry him. And the producers were amazing. And I said, you've got to tell me when I'm going home now, because I'm, and they actually rewrote a little bit, and I was home. Like what an extraordinary Heavens. story, <laughs> and not one that we were expecting, oh. I have to say. <laughs> and, uh, but, but an incredible new perspective on life. Absolutely. That's I'm it. not no wasting my time yeah. now. I'm, I'm living to the full. My beautiful son and daughter are leaving home this yeah, and I'm just out there, if you want me. Yeah, bedroom <laughs> fast at the moment, West Yorkshire Playhouse in Leeds. And thank you very Ooh, much indeed. Ah, you're and, uh, and also don't forget those gigs. We'll put all the details of the gigs on our, on our website. Yeah.
And while we take all that in, have a look at this competition. Thank you, Denise.